everybody. Welcome back to Bushcraft and Camping Australia. We're out at Wadigan's again and this place is clearly our regular. This is the fourth time I've been out here now. The last video was here with Ross and George. Ross was there and George was there. But today's a very different video to the Ross and George. I'm really excited. This I'm basically bushcraft sheltering it up today. It's a big bushcraft episode. So if you like watching that kind of stuff, watch the whole thing and stick around. Because if it goes to plan, this is going to look very different this time tomorrow. So I'm not going to go through plans yet, but suffice to say, it's actually pretty exciting the idea I've got. I, might, I probably won't get it all done today. But between this, potential with this bed, my tarp, it's very good. I'm trying something different today because today is winter. So it's cold season now and this is going to get to, now before I say the temperature, if you're watching from the States or from Canada or somewhere where there's actual cold weather, you're going to laugh at me here, but it's going to get to about 5 degrees Celsius tonight. Um, to me, that's cold. So accordingly, I'm testing out my winter loadout. So I've bought an extra bit of kit, um, specifically that I've, I've made six months ago now, just for this season. So I'm gonna test that out, I'll show you that later. Um, I've also, I'm gonna be running a dual setup. Because my sleeping bag, it's like plus seven, it's a pretty average sleeping bag. I'm not confident it's gonna keep me it's sufficiently warm on the bed out here tonight. So I've actually bought the tent as well. I'm not even sure where I'll put it because I do want to be able to capitalize on the fire if I um, need it, which is going to be impossible. So it's going to have to take the George spot over there. But that's my backup. That's my storage space and that's my backup. If it gets too cold and my sleeping bag and all my kit ain't cutting it and I'm sitting out here and I'm suffering, I'm just going to go over there and sleep in the tent. So... I'm very good at doing a lot of that. Let's start building our shelter. I've been looking forward to this all week, so let's go. First, food break. Guess what's on my sandwich? Halloumi. I'm not so sure if I'm even going to need to cut anything today. There's just so much dropped dead wood here. Well seasoned for firewood. Um, this shelter is going to come along really quick. Then another dead one right here. Let's see if I can drop that. Okay. That one. Choppy choppy. Great success! Well, so far we just got a pile of sticks. 
Massive death. This is where the magic happens. We're going to turn all this into a shelter. Alrighty. So I've just sat down for a while, just chilled out for a bit. Regained, regained some of my stamina. And um, I'm just about to start building a shelter. So here's the idea that I've got. To start with, I'm building a wall here. From this tree out to about here, maybe about waist high at this point. Then I'm gonna build a small wall to here. From here to here. I'm gonna leave that section open. Then I'm gonna block off the other end. Eventually the idea will be to fill this in as well, all the way across using the trees as the, as the brace. So that's the idea. I got more long-term plans involving that diagonal wall, involving the roof. Um, all sorts of stuff we could do. So yeah, so that's it. I'm going to start cutting the wood up to length now. I've got my measuring stick. It just so worked out that from the end to here comes exactly to the edge of the bed. And from here is clearance area. So it makes it very easy to measure. So that worked out. So I guess we'll just get to move up. We will get to chopping. So here's probably the first layer or first level of the first stage. I'll have it up to here. I can pull this post out and extend it higher when I want it later. But for now, I'm just going to do it to here. So, just get my cordage. I'm simply wrapping. You can see here I use the natural cordage, the vine that's on that log there to bind it all down the bottom. And now I bind it up the top.
All right, well, the shelter's done. There's a lot of work to be done, but it's about 4, 4.30. I got time if, like, if it's a light issue, but to be honest, I kind of just want to relax and enjoy my handicrafts. I've got the wall up, I've got the backup tent up, I've got my equipment in there, I've got everything set out here. All that's needed to be added now is the sleeping mats and all that stuff, but I'm pretty hungry, so I might start a fire and have some food have a lunch dinner a late lunch so yeah pretty i'm pretty happy with the shelter eh? like my mind is still racing with potential for things we can do um i still got a whole open side which i, sh I, I could close but the logs i'd have to use these ones here the ones with the dagnar wall and i just like them not that it's hard to rebuild but i just like them there so this will give me a project for next time maybe as well as the back wall yeah, very cool stuff. So I was going to do another um, album review. The first one was Between the Buried and Me, Autonoma, Automata Part 1, and that was really good. The second one was Hacken, Haken, Harken, however you pronounce it, with their album um, Affinity, and that was really good. And I've got another good one now. I must admit I cheated. I had to listen to it before when I was building this. And before I tell you who it is, I'll tell you that it's a fairly unknown band. They're an Australian band. And one of their, there's a two-part track on there. It's only a four-album, um, a four-song album, whatever it is, release EP. But there's a two-part track on there that I legitimately, I'm calling it a masterpiece. It is really good. Like, it just has everything. Their style is Imagine If Tool um, and Tourist got together um, and had a kebab. And um, had a jam. I don't know. It's it's basically a Middle Eastern influenced progressive metal band. Um, as I said, they're very um, epic and almost like cinematic. Yeah, they they really tell stories and their music reflects that story. And holy man, wow, so good. So anyway, I'm going to start a new thing. I checked out the copyright laws and what have you, and. Uh, it's no problem for me to post some of the music, so as long as I'm not depriving the artist of, an, of a potential income earning situation. So I can just play little snippets, so I will. So, uh, yeah, check it out. Using the Middle East to I'm using some special fertilizer from Armour's Holding. Using the Crocosis in the Yodin. Mm, come on, baby, light my fire. It wants to. But will it? That's the question. Hmm, maybe not. All right, so probably one of the first things that was bushcraft that I ever made was I got a stick and I sanded it and I called it a back scratcher. And Renee always told me it's not a back scratcher, it's crap, rah rah. So I bought a back scratcher for it, it has like a big, like bear claw on it but at the end of the day no one uses it so the other day I'm sitting there bored and I look at the extendable pole and I think that's got to be hollow so I work the plastic off and it's hollow I break the head off and now I have a freaking extendable I 
I mean, come on. I mean, I know other bushcrafters do this, but it wasn't like I saw it on a video and I thought I'll copy that. It kind of happened organically, so it made it kind of me, made me feel like I kind of earned it. So the sun's going down pretty early today. It'll be dark by 5.30, which means I'll probably be in bed very early. But, um, that's okay. If one bed gets uncomfortable, I'll move to the other one. 